This is Space Time, Series 25, Episode 141. Coming up on Space Time. An independent investigation underway into a Vegas C rocket failure during launch. A violent leak threatens the space worthiness of a Soyuz capsule at the International Space Station. And the space station forced to undertake an emergency avoidance manoeuvre to keep out of the way of a piece of massive space junk. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. The European Space Agency has suspended all Vega flights and have established an independent board of inquiry following the failure of a Vega C rocket during its ascent to orbit. The ill-fated mission was only the second flight for the new Vega C and its first commercial launch. The new rocket had undertaken a successful maiden flight back in July. The mission from the European Space Agency's Kourou spaceport in French Guiana began smoothly enough, with a spectacular nighttime launch into the warm black tropical skies. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, top. Allumage B120, décollage. La propulsion, la propulsion est nominale. Le pilotage est calme. Le pilotage est calme. La trajectoire est nominale. Acquisition de la télémesure par la station de Saint-Jean. Paramètres bord sont nominaux. How fantastic to see Vegas C roaring across that equatorial sky. Yet again, one can't take one's eyes off her. It's so impressive, like a boil of light grumbling across the jungle. This is, of course, the second launch of Vega C, Europe's new launcher, and it has just successfully completed liftoff with player Neo 5 and 6 on board. These two satellites, designed by Airbus Defence and Space, are the 119th and 120th to lift off on a Vega launcher. What are the main stages of the flight we should be looking out for in the next few minutes? So in a little less than one minute, the P-130 first stage will have finished its job and it will separate from the launcher. This is the, the, the second flight of this P-120 stage uh, uh, following the, the maiden flight and it will also be used on, on Ariane 6 later on. It's always uh, incredible to see the, the liftoff. There we go. Separation du P120 et allumage du Zephyro 40. There we have it. The separation of the P120. Well, he, the DDO has just confirmed the separation of the first stage. So, if I've understood correctly, the P120, uh, David, is just one of the new features of this new launcher. Am I right? Yes. So, besides this uh, first stage, uh, the second and the fourth stages, so the Zephyro 40 and the Avum, have also been improved. Increasing their propellant capacity and, and therefore the, the overall launcher performance. And also, very important, the fairing volume has been increased, allowing the launcher to, to accommodate uh, larger satellites. Well, Vega C is starting to lighten its weight and separate from its first stage, the P120. What is the next step for the European launcher? So, in a few seconds, uh, the Zephyro 40 stage uh, will have finish, finished also its job and it will also separate from the launcher. And the third stage, the set nine, will ignite and continue the mission. The Vega C's new solid rocket first stage engine performed nominally, propelling the two satellite payload towards orbit. However, following MECO, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second stage ignition, communications with the rocket was suddenly lost, and the launch vehicle began to deviate off course, rapidly losing altitude. At the time, the flight was already over 100 kilometers in altitude and some 900 kilometers downrange over the North Atlantic Ocean. Um, we see that there's a problem with the, the trajectory. David, can you tell us? Yes, so there seems to be a, an issue with, uh, with the launcher, yes. So we stand by to, to get more information. So could you tell us exactly, we can see on the, the, the graph in front of us, we can see that the trajectory, it seems to be going, maybe is it going off course? You, can you tell me? No. Yes, yes, indeed, the, the altitude, it seems uh, to be lower than expected. So the altitude, we're at 107 kilometers. Have you got any news from us from Kuru in your earpiece? No, not for the time being. Uh... In this type of situation, what, what, how would you interpret this? What, what might have happened? What could happen? Okay, for the time being, um, we're, we're waiting to get uh, more precise information on... Sorry, David, you were saying you're still waiting for news in your earpiece, is that That's right? That's right, yeah. We can see the DDO. They seem very focused and still concentrated, trying to work out the problem. The French 
space agency Kines was forced to abort the mission and initiate a self-destruct order, blowing up the rocket and its multi-million dollar payload, a pair of Earth observation satellites built by Airbus. The Pleiades Neo 5 and 6 spacecraft were meant to join the Pleiades Neo constellation, undertaking high-resolution imagery of the planet. In your long career, have you already um, had a, a problem such as this, perhaps? Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, there, is, uh, there have been uh, issues before, yes. Okay. À tous de DDO, suite à accident lanceur, que tous les moyens restent activés pour une mise en configuration d'arrêt de la base de lancement. What does that mean, David? What has uh, the DDO just announced to us? Yeah, so the DDO announced that there was indeed a, an issue with, uh, with the launcher, and so uh, everybody's uh, standing by to, on the launch base to, to see what uh, the exact what the next situation step is. is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The failure appears to have involved the Italian built Zephora 40 second stage. It marks the third failure in nine launches for the Vega rocket. This launch was originally slated to fly back in November, but it was delayed due to issues with the Vega C's new payload fairings. Ariane Space Chief Executive Stephen Israel says the launch failure was unrelated to that issue. He says the flight data will be analysed as part of the inquiry, which will be co-led by the European Space Agency and Ariane Space. So um, after the liftoff and and the nominal uh, the nominal uh, initiation of the P 120 C, which is the first stage of the Vega, uh, an under pressure has been observed on the Zephyro 40, which is the second stage of the Vega. And after this under pressure, we have observed the deviation of the trajectory and a very strong anomaly. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we can say that the mission is uh, lost. And uh, I want to deeply apologize towards our customer, uh, Playa Neo and Airbus Defense and Space for uh, this uh, failure tonight. And we will now have to work with all our partners uh, to better understand why uh, the Zephyro 40 uh, has not uh, worked properly tonight, uh, triggering the failure of the mission. So we are going now immediately with all the teams, with our prime view, and uh, all the partners to uh, study uh, what has happened tonight. And I really apologize for this uh, anomaly. Israel further added that neither the Ariane 5 or the new Ariane 6 programs are impacted by this failure. But with only two Ariane 5 launch vehicles left in the manifest and the Ariane 6 not expected to undertake its maiden flight until later next year, Europe is now left without an independent means of accessing space. The European Union won't use Russian Soyuz rockets because of the sanctions imposed on Moscow in the wake of the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine, and so that leaves the United States in the box seat, at least until the Vega C is returned to flight status. This is Space Time. Still to come, a violent leak threatens the spaceworthiness of a Soyuz capsule docked to the International Space Station and the space station forced to undertake emergency manoeuvres to avoid a massive piece of space junk. All that and more still to come on Space Time. The Russian Federal Space Agency at Roscosmos are trying to determine if the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft will be safe to return crew to Earth after suddenly springing a violent coolant leak. The spacecraft, which is docked at the Razvet module of the International Space Station, suddenly started spewing what appears to be ammonia coolant into space just as two Russian cosmonauts were about to begin a planned seven-hour spacewalk to relocate a radiator from one Russian module to another. ...coming out of the uh, Soyuz MS-22 vehicle that is attached to the Razvet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. We do not know what the source of this uh, stream of particles is at the point. At this point, uh, there is uh, discussions that are ongoing. Uh, first, uh, to make sure that the safety of the two spacewalkers is not compromised in any way, and then uh, to determine uh, what impact, if any, this might have on the integrity of that Soyuz vehicle. Neither NASA nor Roscosmos have specified what the coolant was, but ammonia, a common spacecraft coolant, can be highly corrosive to many metals. Russian mission managers knew there was a problem when an alarm in the Soyuz diagnostic system suddenly went off, indicating a pressure drop in the coolant system. 
They then spotted a stream of fluid and particles flowing from the Soyuz on the live video feed and quickly cancelled the spacewalk. Dramatic NASA TV images showed white particles resembling snowflakes streaming from the aft section of the Soyuz. The leak quickly caused the temperature in the cockpit section of the Soyuz to rise to 30 degrees Celsius, while the temperature in its equipment section initially soared to over 40 degrees before dropping back to 30 after mission managers activated additional cooling systems. Cosmonauts used ventilators in the Russian section of the space station to blow cold air into the capsule, reducing temperature in the cockpit back down to comfortable levels. An external inspection of the spacecraft using a camera on one of the space station's robotic arms helped identify the location of the coolant leak to a 0.8mm hole in the outer skin of an instrument and equipment casing on one of the Soyuz external radiators. The leak continued to flow for about three hours until the coolant supply inside was exhausted. Roscosmos say tests of the ship's control systems determined that they weren't affected by the leak, and no other spacecraft near the Soyuz appears to have been damaged. Russian engineers ordered the Soyuz to fire up its main thrusters just for a short burst to ensure that all systems were nominal. Mission managers at Star City just outside Moscow are now deciding whether the Soyuz MS-22 will be safe for cosmonauts to use for the return trip to Earth in March, or whether it should be discarded and a replacement Soyuz sent up instead. But as Cosmos says, the next spacecraft, the Soyuz MS-23, has already undergone some of its tests in preparation for its launch in March. But those could be expedited if necessary, and the spacecraft sent up early without a crew. Russia has suffered a string of problems with leaks and equipment malfunctions aboard the International Space Station or spacecraft that are docked to it and most of these have been put down to quality control issues. However, Roscosmos claimed this latest leak may have been caused by a micrometeoroid impact or a tiny piece of space junk hitting the capsule. But without a close-up inspection, we'll never know. This is space time. Still to come, the International Space Station forced to undertake an emergency manoeuvre in order to avoid space junk. And later in the science report, fossils of a new species of non-avian predatory dinosaur discovered in Mongolia. All that and more still to come on Space Time. NASA have cancelled a planned spacewalk and undertaken an emergency manoeuvre to move the International Space Station out of the way of a piece of Russian space junk heading in their direction. The three and a half metre wide spent frigate upper stage, used on Soyuz and Proton rockets, was predicted to pass within half a kilometre of the orbiting outpost, far too close for comfort, triggering the highest level red alert. The incident happened after two Expedition 68 crew members successfully completed the first of two EVAs or extravehicular activities to increase the orbiting outpost's power output. The seven hour and five minute spacewalk successfully installed one of the new iRosa rollout solar arrays, which were recently transported to the space station. The team also disconnected a cable to ensure the 1B channel could be reactivated and they released several bolts for the upcoming installation of another iRosa solar array, this one on the 4A power channel on the port truss. When it's installed, it'll be the fourth of six iRosa solar panels that are being added. This report from NASA TV. Since its inception, the International Space Station has been powered by large, heavy, and complex solar panels. But as expected, these panels have slowly degraded over time. As a part of an experiment, the station's robotic arm unfurled the first ROSA, or Rollout Solar Array, in 2017, testing a new and unique concept. Instead of a rigid solar panel, ROSA was crafted from a composite carbon fiber, containing an array of solar cells that can be deployed and retracted similar to a tape measure, using stored strain energy of the material. ROSA was also lightweight and generated power with more efficiency. Now, larger versions of ROSA technology, known as iROSA, are being installed on the station permanently through a series of launches and spacewalks. The arrays augment the existing power supply and restore power to previous levels when the original arrays were installed. ROSA technology is also an important part of future exploration. It will serve as a power source for Gateway, the planned multi-purpose outpost orbiting the moon, 
Prosa, proven on the space station and powering its way to the moon and beyond our planet's reach. A new panels will increase the space station's solar power capacity by 30% from 160 up to 215 kilowatts. However, the planned second spacewalk to install that fourth array was postponed after mission managers determined that a large section of Russian space junk, which they had been tracking for several days, was likely to pass dangerously close to the space station. Mission managers in Moscow used the thrusters on one of the Dock Progress cargo ships to safely maneuver the space station out of the way of the spent rocket stage. This is Space Time. And that's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favourite podcast download provider and from SpacetimeWithStuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Space Time store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Space Time patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram, through our Space Time YouTube channel. And on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash Space Time with Stuart Gary. And Space Time is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Space Time with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. 